All right, welcome back. Let's go from our dice game planning sheet here. Let's actually put this into action. Uh, remember what we're going to do? I'm just going to code this straight down without worrying about these little checks here, right? So when the users ask questions, I'm not going to loop to make sure they answer good stuff. I'm just going to assume what they uh, put in for the input is perfect. Okay, so let's start coding this little dice game here. Declare variables, roll a dice, ask, ask, roll second. All right, let's go for it. You'll see here I've already made some variables for me. I've started the player at 100. I need a variable for how much they're going to bet. I've put that at zero. And at some point, there's going to be a response, right? They have to answer some questions that are going to be strings. So I've set that one just to nothing. All right, let's go here. I'm going to do no loops. So, so far, I'm going to say, I'm just going to start coding this out. System.out, print line. Welcome to the game. That's sort of nice. Now I'm going to roll my first dice. Now, what I have to do here is I'll actually make one more, two more variables here. Die 1, die 2. Is I'm going to use the math library for this one here. So I'm going to roll my first die. So die 1 equals math dot random. And let's not forget our casting. Math dot random times 6 plus 1. So this will get us 1 to 6. And I'm going to print that out so the user can see it. First die is die 1. So now they get to see it. Now I have to ask them whether or not they think it's going to be higher or lower. So you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to make another string. I'll call it high low and I'll do this one. So high low user input get string is next die higher or lower. And I'm just going to tell them they have to enter H or L. Okay, little case. So they enter that in. Uh, I see I don't have user input. I'm just going to quickly go grab that in. And there we go. Now after they've done the high-low there, now I have to ask them how much they want to bet. So bet equals user input. This time I'll get an integer from them. How much you want to bet. They enter some good value there, right? We'll come back and we'll check that later. And now what I have to do, well, let's go check our plan. They've entered, they've entered. I have to roll the second die, and then I have to check the results and give or take away money. Okay, so let's tackle this part. Check in the results. Okay, so they've entered a higher low, and now i got to roll the second dice and check. So let's actually do this first. Let's roll die two integer math dot random times six plus one I'm having a bad typing day here today whoa there we go okay now let's do the checks so the check I'm gonna just do a quick I'm gonna check for the wins here and so if die two is bigger than die one and I wanna ask if the user said H, right? If they guessed the next dice would be higher. So if die 2 is bigger than die 1 and high low dot equals high is true, this is one of the winning conditions. Okay? So I can give them money. So I can say money goes up by the value of bet. You know what? I haven't shown you that yet, so I'll just do this. Money is money plus bet. And maybe a little system out, print line. You were right. You won. There we go. And we just give them a little feedback, right? That they won. Let's do the same thing here. I'm going to do a little copy-paste. And we'll do the same thing for the other winning condition. And I'm going to make sure to use an else here. Because I know if they didn't win this way, well, else, I'll do another check. Well, let's see if die 1, let's see if die 2 was smaller than die 1, and they had said smaller, then they also win money, and they won again. Now, if they didn't win with those two conditions, I know what happened, they lost money. So money is money minus bet, and system out, print line, you, you were wrong. You 
you lost bet. It's perfect. Now at this point in our planning, we've gone all the way down to here. Now what we have to do is we have to say if the user has enough money, so I may as well print their money out. I'm going to ask them if they have enough money. And if they do have enough money, I'm going to let them play again. So let's code that in here. So I'm going to do a little system out print line. You now have money. So it prints out their current money. And now I'm going to do a little check to see if they have enough money. So if the money is greater or equal to one, so if they have at least one dollar left, then they're allowed to get the question to see if they want to play again. So remember when they're asking the question if they want to play again, I had made this variable up here called response. So I'm going to use that variable to keep track of their answer that's going to be yes or no. So I'm going to ask here, I'm going to say response equals user input, get string, do you want to play again? Yes or no. Okay, so I get the response. Now, else, if they don't have enough money, I'm going to do a little extra system out here saying, you are out of money, game over, go home. Not very nice, but it gets to the point here. Okay, now that's basically, okay, the program without the loops in it. Let's give this a little run and see what happens. So, first die is a 3. Is the next guy going to be higher or lower? Well, that's a tough one. I'll say higher. How much do I want to bet? Well, I, have a, I didn't print out that I have $100, but I have $100. So let's bet 40. And I was wrong. Oh, I see here that I should probably print out that second dice just to show them. I lost 40. I now have 60. And you'll notice here, I still have money. Um, I need to make the program go back up and loop again. So let's go correct a few of those little things that I had wrong in my program. So way at the top here, welcome to the game. System out, print line. You have money. So at least there, we're showing them how much money they have. Uh, the other thing was the second roll. So right there, system out, print line. The second die was die two. So now we have the second die. So it's all looking pretty good. So now that we have this basic framework going here on our dice game, what we can do is we can just add those loops in and actually make the code loop where it's supposed to loop. So I will put that in the next video. Thanks for watching.